Welcome. You're here because you want to start making money online with just HTML and CSS. JavaScript is a bit of a mountain and it takes quite a while to climb it. It's definitely worth doing it, but you're going to have to take your time. And sometimes we don't have enough time. We need to start earning immediately. So in this video, I want to give you six ways that you can start making money an awful lot faster with just HTML and CSS. So the first option that I want to discuss is using email newsletter templates. So I run an email newsletter, it's called Danny's Dispatch, and I know how important it is to have nice emails coming into people's inboxes. We don't want emails to be heavy with loads of images that takes forever to load because the bounce rate or how quickly people leave an email is extremely quick. I know for me especially, if I have loads of emails in my inbox, I'm actually just ticking them off so that they're no longer a notification. And a lot of people are also like that. So there's quite an art to creating really efficient and effective emails. But I have actually hired people in the past to do email templates for me, and I've actually made email templates as well for other people. So this is an area you can get into. It's a little bit more complicated than it initially seems. You do have to understand how to lay out an email, what CSS is actually covered with uh, email. No JavaScript is allowed during emails as well, so you have to kind of be creative with it, but it's a good area to start. And there are jobs hiring on freelance platforms like Upwork where you can start applying for gigs pretty much as soon as you know HTML and CSS. If you already have an email design in mind, but you don't really know how to make it happen, a good thing to do is to just use ChatGPT and say, hey, how can I convert this design idea or this HTML and CSS to be email compatible? Because it has to be responsive as well, but this is an area that you can dive into, take your time and start making money pretty quickly. Option number two, is microsites. So a microsite is basically a word I've made up. Uh, at least I think I've made it up. But it's for small little one-off events. So you'll notice like we're coming up to Christmas now, but this goes for all year. You're talking Halloween, Easter, any other holidays, Thanksgiving I think just passed in the United States. So uh, oftentimes companies will have pop-up events for these types of times of year. Uh, music festivals, that sort of thing. But they often want websites for that single event. And usually it's not going to be a massive, highly functional website with loads of stuff going on. It. It's typically just going to be a landing page with a form attached to it. Now, a lot of these people will just use websites like Wix or Squarespace, but you can start doing these with just HTML and CSS. And on top of that, if you just learn one of those web builders like Framer, you can start making websites really quickly that look great and it'll put money in your pocket. Now it's important to consider when you're making a micro site, you have to be reasonable. Like you're not gonna be able to charge $2,000 for it. You know, we're talking a couple of hundred dollars here or there. In Ireland, I'd be looking out for small little festivals, maybe martial arts gyms, GAA and sports clubs, things like that. I guess it's the same for like a baseball team in the United States or whatever. I actually found a couple of prospects for these micro sites. I was looking around um, for music festivals. So there's one in Ireland called C Sessions and they already have a website and they've used Wix. And that's just proof of concept basically that these festivals need websites. And usually they'll have a third party booking situation. So you just hit a link to take you to the booking page. So you don't even have to implement all of the booking logic and stuff. Santa's Grotto was another one and they use some, I've never even heard of it, it's called Create but they've used a different page builder as well. So these are things that you could start offering to little events. If you just hear people talking about, oh, there's some event coming up, check and see if they have a website. And if they don't, bingo. Number three is custom website headers and footers. So a header and footer is usually part of a theme and it's part of the navigation of a website. And a big problem with user experience is generally navigation. Now this can be complicated for a lot of reasons, but if you become a bit proficient with HTML and CSS, you can go in and customize headers, footers, navigation bars. And I've actually seen some jobs on Upwork for exactly this about two days ago. So check it every day and you could just have that one little speciality that you do. It can be really valuable to people and to the customers on the other end. So another way to do it is to go through other websites that are local to you and just see if they've got broken links or they've got problems with the user experience. 
and you can then suggest ways to fix that. Option number four that you can consider is customizing forms. So as I mentioned earlier, a lot of websites have forms. It's pretty much fundamental. My website has a form. I think pretty much every website has a form at this stage. And it's usually to sign up to a newsletter or to submit a request to do something. But forms are actually pretty complicated. For HTML and CSS, you can design them pretty well, but interacting with the back end, making sure that you get everything right is pretty daunting. So it's a good area for you to specialize in because a lot of other developers will struggle with it and a lot of other people who've set up websites will struggle with it. So there's even companies completely dedicated to just doing forms. An example of that would be Typeform. And I think there's a bunch of other ones, but you could become proficient in maybe one of these softwares like Typeform or just implementing normal forms with the action and stuff. Uh, I learned everything I know about forms from the Odin project, and I'm gonna to link to that um, module from the Odin project. But if you're still learning to code, a really good area to focus on, I believe, is forms. Let me get a drink, it's cold in here. Option number five for you to start making money with just HTML and CSS are customizing. It's kind of a bit like microsites, but what you'll notice is a lot of designers or freelancers, they don't have a specific website. They'll, they'll use something like Behance. And Behance is basically like a design Facebook page, for example. It's like your online portfolio. And they're really cool, they're responsive, they're amazing. And I've seen some beautiful portfolios on Behance. The trouble is sometimes it doesn't set you apart from the crowd because they don't have their own personal website. And sometimes they have a website, but the link doesn't work or they had it up years ago and it doesn't work anymore. But the issue I've seen with Behance is most people who are going to hire a designer are going to be searching on their phones. It's actually crazy how many people are searching on their phones. And Behance, when you upload a project, it'll look incredible on desktop. But then when you click into the project on mobile, it's not responsive. So you have to do all of this zooming gymnastics and then you zoom in too much and you get a bit lost. So you could offer that service to different designers and say, hey, well, I can convert your portfolio projects into responsive websites. So you can host them for free using something like Netlify or whatever, you could find another way to do it. We have a dog barking outside, so apologies if you can hear that in the background, it's nothing I can do. Now, sometimes converting these microsites into actual websites can be a bit of a pain, especially if you're building everything from scratch. If you really want to improve your HTML and CSS, go for it and practice it from scratch. But one thing that I've been doing is using a tool called Framer. And that brings me on to the sponsor of today's video, me. I have created a course for you guys if you want to learn the Framer tool. So Framer is a tool that you can use to make websites pretty quickly. It's relatively easy and I guide you through the whole process from total beginner to being able to actually freelance as a web developer. So if you're interested, you can just click the link in the bio and it'll take you to a free course. You can see if it's something that you're interested in. Uh, option number six, finally, is to link up with other developers. Uh, I found that even though I was working with React all the time, a huge amount of my time was spent on just CSS. So an awful lot of other projects are also like that. So you've got developers who are working on React and you may not know React yet. You may not know that much JavaScript yet, but if you're really good at CSS, people will ask you to help because an awful lot of coding, honestly, I know I'm saying this phrase a lot, but it is a huge part of front end development, messing around with CSS. So sometimes if I'm stuck on a project that is just taking me a long time and I have a lot of business logic to go through, I've actually hired freelancers to help me to do just the CSS part. And what you'll find is working with other developers will actually improve you a lot faster, but it's also a valuable resource. So not only are you building a network, but you can also earn a little bit of money on the side. And you can check through websites like Upwork, where developers are looking for a little bit of help for a short period of time for just a specific part of a website. And you may only need to know something about forms or HTML and CSS. I hope you found this video interesting and if you did, feel free to watch this video next.